Welcome to ECLEMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed different types of reflecting curved surfaces and one of it was concave mirrors. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss the application of concave mirrors. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain at least five applications of concave mirrors. So the first application of concave mirror is that it is used as a shaving mirror and it's because it produces a magnified and upright image when the object is placed between the principal focus F and the pole P. So if I can draw a representation of a concave mirror to represent this as a shaping mirror, then I have to draw a horizontal line, which will represent the principal axis. Then I draw a vertical line, which will represent the mirror. So in this case, this is a concave mirror. Remember what we did in the ray diagrams. This is a concave mirror. And this is the, the, the pole. Then from the pole, we can have the focal length, which is equal to the, uh, the, the radius of uh, curvature. So this the, that is the focal length. Then this is the radius of curvature. At the radius of curvature, we have the center of curvature. The, at the focal point, we have the principal focus F. Then in this case, for the, the object that will be shaving or the person who will be shaving will be seated between the pole and the principal focus like this. If this is the person, I can call that one a person with shaving. In this case, for you to locate the, the, the image of this object, then you can use any of the rays that we discussed. A ray, which is parallel to the principal axis, will be reflected and it will pass through the principal focus. So in this case, it will get reflected like that. Then the second ray that we can use is a ray that will pass through C, to the tip of this object, it will be reflected along its own path. So in this case, this ray will go to the mirror and then it will get reflected along its own path. So as you can see, these rays can never meet on the left hand side here. But if we are courageous enough to extend these rays, they are going to meet somewhere behind this mirror. So if I extend the other one here, then we are going to realize that these rays are going to meet at some point there. So when they meet now, they are going to form an image. And this image, as you can see, it's formed behind the mirror. Therefore, it is virtual. So this is the image. The image is very virtual, but it's taller or larger than the object. Now, the, the property of this mirror, when the object is between F and P making an image which is upright and larger than the object make shaving to be very easy. The second application is that they are used by dentists when examining teeth because these mirrors produce magnified and upright image when the object or the teeth in this case is placed between the principal focus F and the pole. And that's what exactly we have just discussed. But there are still these, if this is the, 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 the principal focus and then this is the mirror and it's a concave mirror then you have your principal focus at that point then you have the center of curvature this c this f then when the doctor is examining the teeth he will place the your teeth or the mirror in a way that the teeth that they want to examine is between the pole and the the, the principal focus like that so after that what they will do the image will be formed behind the mirror in such a way that if we form this image array parallel to the principal axis getting reflected through the focal point like in this case here then another ray from the tip through C getting reflected along its own path not that one let me redraw it for better so array from the tip through C, it will get reflected along its own path. And if it gets reflected along its own path, as you can see, they can never meet behind here. 
But if you extend this rays behind this mirror, these two rays are going to meet uh, within a very short distance. So this one, they can meet at this point there. And now when they meet, if you join or if you draw a, an image where they meet using a dotted or broken lines, then you're going to form an image. And this image is very larger than the object. And this one makes the dentist to examine the teeth very easily. So this is the teeth. So another application is that they are used behind the projector lamps to reflect light that travel away from the projector. Now this lamp is placed at the center of curvature of a concave mirror. So if I can draw a diagram to represent that, then first I have to draw the principal axis. Then I draw a vertical line which will represent the concave mirror that we have. So this is our concave mirror. Then after that, I have to draw the focal point and then I draw the center of curvature. So this projector lamp is placed at the center of curvature. The lamp will be placed at this point here. Now, since this is a lamp, in this case, this lamp now will produce light. The light which it produces will travel from the center of curvature to the mirror. And remember, a ray that travels to the mirror from the center of curvature will be reflected along its own path. So this one will be uh will be will travel to the mirror and then it will be reflected back like that and then another ray will travel also through the center of curvature to the mirror and then the same ray will be reflected back on its own path so this one will travel to the mirror and then it will be reflected along its own path and therefore if you have now a screen here if you have the screen here, then the information from this projector will be reflected, all of it will be reflected on this screen here. So this is the screen. So the purpose of this concave mirror is to reflect this light so that it gets magnified on the screen for easy visibility, you know how projectors work. Another application of concave mirrors is that it is used in telescopes to bring distance objects, that is objects at infinity, like stars into focus at the principal point or at the, the principal focus point or focal point. In this case, if I draw a diagram to represent that, then I have to draw my principal axis like that. Then I draw a vertical line, which will represent the mirror that we are using. Then in this case, I have to identify where the focal point is and then where the center of curvature is. Then this is the pole. Now, if we have rays from infinity, rays from infinity and which are parallel to each other, but not parallel to the principal axis, these rays are parallel, but they are not parallel to the principal axis. These rays will be formed at the oracle converge at the focal plane. Remember the focal plane is a, a virtual plane which lies at this point here. So those rays which are parallel and not parallel to the principal focus, they will converge or they always converge at one point at the focal plane. Now where they converge, that will be the image which will be formed. Like in this case, the image will be formed which will be upside down like that. The image will be upside down like that and it will be formed at F. So this idea of concave mirrors converging rays from infinity at F and therefore forming an image at F helps us to or helps in, in, in telescopes where very uh, distant objects can be focused at the focal point for observation and scientific research. So the fifth application is that they are used as solar concentrators to bring light energy into focus. Just like converging lens, this one, all these concave mirrors also have an ability to converge light into one point. And in this case, if I can draw a representation of this concave mirror, then I have the principal focus at that point, then the center of curvature at this point, then now if I draw 
rays which are close and parallel to the principal axis like here on top i have three paraxial rays remember what paraxial rays mean so if i have three of them one then two then the third ray is here parallel and close to the principal axis below here also have one two then we have the third one there then now these rays all of them are going to converge at f like in this case let me use a red ink to draw that this one is going to converge there the second one is going to converge at that same point then the third one is also going to converge at that exact point this one is also going to converge at that point like that then from below here the first one is also going to converge at that point the second one is going to converge at the same same center of curvature not center of curvature, but principal focus then the third one is also going to converge at the principal focus so where they meet they will produce a lot of energy since the many rays are meeting at that point and therefore this can be used in heating and even in production of energy even running some uh, machines so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss application of convex reflectors